a life science consultancy that provides solutions and also trainings on new alternatives to animal testing. He has a PhD in neuroscience, but also a master's degree in uh, business administration. Uh, Marco is also a former associate professor uh, and researcher in stem cell technologies and uh, regenerative medicine in the University of Barcelona. So as you can see, he has the perspective of the business, uh, the industry, and also uh, research. He has deep experience in stem cell biology and has uh, 17 publications and many uh, research activities. He has also been involved in educational projects such as gamification of science education for undergraduate students. So we are expecting this to be a very interesting exchange in the context of second, uh, secondary schools and high schools. Um, and before I cede the stage to Dr. Stracha, I would like to encourage all of you to share your thoughts and ideas with us. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask because there are no uh, simple or stupid questions. This is a very new, innovative technology. And Dr. Stracha is here with us for us to uh, share his experience. And he also would like to hear uh, your feedback on uh, uh, the topics he will present and how these can be introduced in the classroom as well. I hope you're all hearing me well, and uh, we're still waiting for the, the slides to be uploaded. Yeah, so I, I will, in the meantime, uh, make another brief introduction to trying to stimulate the, the, the debate, because uh, I'm not an expert in creativity. So as you know, I mean, I'm a scientist, maybe I have some creativity for me, but I don't know how to teach it. So I would like to have, you know, to challenge you to have a very nice discussion here, because I think this will be much more enrichment, uh, just just having me talking for hours. So it would be very good if um, you have questions or you have comments, and I will feel very, very happy to, to answer and to, you know, start reasoning all together. Because, um, I mean, if I was a creativity expert, maybe we do not have uh, climate change now. So I think this is something that we can do all together. Uh, okay, I'm reading the chat then meanwhile. So yes, ciao a tutti. <laughs> and, but, uh, well, maybe we can start because if not, it takes, it's taking very long, but, uh, why I choose the creativity um, as subject of this presentation? Because um, uh, when you're doing research, basically, uh, you're asking questions every time, okay? So when you're doing, uh, you're in the lab, okay? But this can be everyone, okay? And maybe most of you are scientists, teachers, so you have a former scientific education, and also you have a master or PhD, so you know what research is, okay? And if you do not know, maybe you can think that uh, when you're doing science and when you're doing research, uh, it could be that uh, you are in a field where nobody is asking that question. So mostly you do not have answer, okay? That's why you're doing the research. So you're asking question and there's no answer. And most of the time there's no tools. And so you have to create these tools. And to create these tools, you need uh, creativity, okay? And this is the same thing for the three R's. So if we would like to replace animal experimentation, what we would like to have are new solutions, which are robust, that we can use in the biomedical science. And, uh, and of course they are reliable, okay? But we'll still need to invent them. So we need to create these solution because they are not there. Okay, so creativity at the end is a very basic uh, of, uh, of research, okay? So that's why I choose this topic. I, I think it's, it's very, very important. And I think you can do a science teacher in uh, primary, secondary, and high school. You can do a lot of, of things to, to help uh, in this part of research. 
should we wait for the upload or just we follow? Sorry, earlier you shared your screen and that worked. Maybe you can show the slides from your screen. Okay, but now I have we can try this that processing way. step three or four. So if now I can sell the upload, it will be cancelled forever again. How far is it? Step three or four, around 30% of processing. Not of uploading, it's already uploaded, but it's processing the, the presentation. Okay. So, yeah, I, I'm looking at the chat. So there are no slides yet because they're uploading. So don't worry, they will come. And let's see. I know that this is your first webinar. Uh, I usually like to hook live stage because it, this way you can engage more with the public and we have better discussion. But uh, let's see. Maybe we can share the screen again. What do you think, Antoine or Eleni? Can wait a, a little bit more? Okay, yep. Maybe. Is there anyone, by the way, among you who is not here through the, the three hours course, the, the MOOC? Is there anyone who uh, heard about the webinar in some other way? Okay, uh, I will cancel the upload and share the screen. Is it okay? Okay, let's yes. do this. It's not... Yes? Yeah, that works. Can you try again?
Marco has lost connection. I will try to quickly make connection with him. I'll come back. Hi. Hello. Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Can you yeah. see the screen also? No. Okay. Because the the system crashed again. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Great. So, sorry for all the inconvenience. So, uh, okay. <clears throat> Just to say what creativity is, and you may know already, okay, is the use of imagination and original ideas to create something. Okay, so it means that we need to think a little bit more and trying to find solutions. And that's what research does. So, my question to you would be, do we face a lot of creativity problem in science? Uh, I would like to have some answers, but uh, usually in the public works, yes. So uh, actually, we are not facing any uh, creativity loss. Because uh, almost two millions, uh, two, yeah, two millions and a half of publications, scientific publications are uh, published each year, okay? And this is increasing seven, eight percent. Of course, not all these publications are very good, first of all. Not all these are describing new invention or new solution, but a good percentage of it. And 2.5 million uh, publication means that we have uh, around uh, five papers per minute uh, to be published, okay? So creativity is not a problem. So the real problem in the creativity is is actually the uh, the delay. Okay, so for example, um, some times ago I went to this uh, design thinking course. Okay, and they were telling me, okay, just draw your family. Okay, if if I'm now asking you to draw my family, okay, or your family, which is better, you know better, you probably will take more than five minutes. Okay, to draw it. And if we're thinking about the creativity process in children, my my daughter, the youngest one, she will take less than three minutes, okay? And she will have all of us here, okay, with the tags on the below. So she has no problem to uh, to draw uh, at something that you ask, because if I'm asking her a dragon, she will also uh, draw a dragon without any problem. If I have to uh, start drawing a dragon, maybe it will take forever, okay? Because I will feel that I'm not able to. But actually, what is happening in the creativity process is that we are going to delay this happening, okay? So there's a delay in the creativity. So we do not lose the creativity, but we keep the creativity inside of us, but it's just delayed to come out. And the other problem is that it will take time to spread and to make it works, okay? So, and this is because usually during uh, the passage from, you know, very the childhood to the adulthood, we feel judged and we start panicking when the people is asking for a new idea and solution. And the other thing is we really f uh, find like we are stuck in the middle and we cannot find any kind of solution or ideas that can be applied. 
So, and this is a great problem because we have a very great potential where we are, we are very young when we are children. Uh, and this is what we are looking for scientists. And actually there are many neuropsychology journal describing that scientists are like uh, very young children, okay? Mostly three years old children. So uh, the difference are the hair, of course. Uh, but the, the thing is that uh, scientists are always, or they should be always asking why, okay? They're asking why this is happening, why this is in this way. And this is what uh, your three years old children usually do. They're always asking why about everything, okay? And when you know the why, then you can find solution to your answer, okay? And this is part of the creativity. So, and, and this is the real problem where you, you go to the university. So, and this is where I think we are bridging a gap here with this kind of course, because uh, especially with the three R's, we are facing uh, a very basic problem, which is we need to develop new models, okay? Especially for the replacement part. So reduction and refinement, you you may, may need creativity, okay? But as you know, you are you have a problem uh, very clear to solve, and you know which is your strategy. Uh, and you need creativity there. But of course, if you would like to replace the animal experimentation, you have to create a completely new model. So, and to do that, you need, of course, um, creativity, okay? So when you are at the university, I mean, and, may, and most of you have been there. Uh, so when you get the master student, you usually tell him the model that he has to use or she has to use uh, to perform her master thesis, and, and there's no problem. So someone is telling them what they have to use to get uh, the final experiment, to the final thesis, or the process, and to answer basically the scientific question. When you're a PhD, you usually uh, the requirement is that you refine a model or you develop a model. So you have to start thinking in a creative way to answer a question, okay? But usually you have a mentor that already guide you in which kind of question, in which kind of field, and this is quite easy. But then when you're going to have your PhD, so you should be independent, you're a postdoc. So the grumpy face that you can see here is because in this moment, nobody's going to tell you anything and you need to create solution. So, and this is an example that you can think, for example, on the, on the three R and the brain organoids. You may have already know what brain organoids, so there are stem cell uh, kind of organ, okay? And brain organoids are mimicking the, the brain formation, okay? So, but what have been done was not done by the professor, okay, so which is Jürgen Noblich, but have, was done by her by his postdoc, which who is uh, Madeleine Lancaster. And this is per, this is why this is because the professor doesn't have any pressure on him, and the postdoc has to create a new solution to a new, a new problem because she would have to answer to that question. So uh, it's very important that we need to teach creativity again at the university. So most of my students, we have to go uh, there and try to have new solutions to, to solve this problem and having this answer. The problem here is that we have, it's not an easy task. We have no time, no training, and no patience. Basically the same thing that you're experimenting. So, uh, so the, 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 the real problem is that nobody's teaching us how to teach creativity and nobody's teaching how, how to do not lose creativity. So, um, we, what we usually do in our classes is that we are teaching a concept and once we have this concept, let's say, communicate to our students, then we ask them for a report, for a project, for something like a lab book or a photo story. So you give them some, some homeworks, okay? Uh, that's what I, I already, uh, I, as former professor, I was also doing, okay? At the end, you would like to see if they have acquired this knowledge, but we never check if they can use this knowledge to create something new, okay? So, 
uh, and what we usually have is, of course, a report. But this is what uh, is limiting the creativity. Okay. So we are limiting the process of creativity because we are already giving them options and we are going to, um, uh, you know, restrict the different kind of offer that we, they can they can do because it making it's, it's making them uh, an easy life. Of course, this is this is something this is something that we also are doing. And so the other way that we can do, OK, and, and you probably can do in the high school. Uh, or the primary school is trying to uh, change the model, okay? Like we are trying to the university uh, university level, because at the end, as I said, we are we are not facing a loser creativity, but we are um, decreasing our creativity uh, potential. So what we should do at the very beginning in our educational system is try to, you know, uh, try to do not decrease the creativity, so we can really. <laughs> Try to uh, focus on uh, different solutions, but this different solution it doesn't mean that we do not have to teach anymore in the way we are doing. It's just maybe trying to ask uh, different questions. So uh, what I'm saying here is it's so we have to try to free the creativity out of them. And so we may ask the people to, uh, for example, find new solution for uh, the city pollution. So if you do this question and you ask them for homework for tomorrow, they probably will come to you with a uh, different kind of uh, solution that have been already published. OK, sorry. I see that there are many people something with a sound. But... Hello? Can you hear me? Hi, Marco. Hello. Uh, sometimes there is a little cut, but from what I can follow so far, your uh, uh, your sentences don't get lost. Uh, I think it's just a delay, maybe, and maybe uh, the holding the microphone closer can help. I'm not sure, but as far as I can hear, it's fine. Just sometimes there are little delays. Okay, it's just because the microphone is in the computer, so I cannot touch it and do anything. Uh, yes, yeah, please carry on. Hello? Yeah. Okay, let's. Okay, maybe there's a delay. Can you turn off my video so we can make it speed up the connection? You are not sharing your camera. We have no video. Please carry on. Okay. Okay, so just to make you an example of what I'm, I'm telling you is like that you are inviting me over for dinner and you start panicking because you do not know what you have to cook. So, and from my side, I would like that you can cook your favorite dish, okay? So the one that you feel comfortable, the one you presents you most, but uh, on the other side, because you would like to, you know, to to feel good is, hi uh, guys, I cannot tell you nothing about the mic. Sorry, I'm just receiving the other uh, chats. So the thing is that at the very beginning, this conversation about the cooking will be, OK, what do you like? So this guy is Italian, so he mostly likes pizza and pasta. So do you like pizza? So at the end, you are going to cook me a pizza or a pasta, OK? Something that I wouldn't like to, to have me. But at the end, what we're doing in this process is narrow down uh, our options, OK? So when we are narrowing down our option, we do not really feel comfortable in expressing ourselves. And this is how we are limiting the creativity. So one thing we can do is try just to give the concept, okay, and then ask for a solution. And maybe this will free the creativity and will create a chaos. 
okay because uh my wife is also a science teacher so when she's asking for you know up to you you can provide me any kind of homework you would like okay but um something that uh will happen will have that you will have a different kind of works that really have no uh, substances. So what we have to do maybe is try to, yes, free creativity, but maybe we need to improve some incentives, okay? Because at the end, uh, we are, our brain is always producing the easiest solution ever, okay? Our brain is lazy, then our brain is looking for, you know, a Netflix series, doesn't want to read a book, they wouldn't like to do anything. So the thing is that what we should try to do is put some incentives uh, on, on, the uh, on the table because our brain turn on only if we are uh, going to uh, face a survival pr uh, problem. So if we are facing the survive, then maybe, okay, our brain start thinking what we can create new, some new solution. And maybe if you're going home, and say your parents that you have failing your exams, maybe this is also a way to turn on your brain. So what we are asking here is uh, that maybe we have to put incentives. So just instead to tell the, the, uh, the children uh, to give us the homework, we can tell them that we're going to evaluate this homework, okay? So they will have evaluation. And the other thing is, that if they are going to have the same idea of any of the other mates or they we can find this idea on the internet we will start uh, you know um taking out some points of their evaluation so this will start creating panicking but this is just when we're facing the darkness at that time our brains start working okay and think about the university and the research process this is exactly the same so in the university, it's a mandatory part, of at least the secondary school. But when you're at the university, you are not going to face, um, you are going to face many problems. The first one is you're not going to get your title, which you have paid for. You're looking for a professional career. So in that time, you start facing this darkness and you have to start your brain and start the creativity to find a solution and answer your question. Because if not a mentor, will just uh, stop you from research and tell you that you're not up to, okay? So, and this is the moment when we need incentives. But of course we can have negative incentives, which is usually work and they are the ones that are taking less time. And we are uh, mostly using the university, <laughs> unfortunately. And then you, of course, will be best having uh, positive uh, incentives, which I really do not know which can be. Okay, at least uh, also at the high school level. So, uh, but think, think about that. Um, one thing is we need incentives. So thanks to the incentives, we can pull creativity. Okay, and when we are pulling the creativity, we are start having some solution. So all each, every each student will send us a solution, a report, so we can, for example, give him uh, just to go to um, animal models and in vitro models, okay, or replacement. We can think that we're going to offer them uh, how uh, a heartbeat is working. So you just playing the basic biology, how, how the heart is working, and then just leave to them, up to them, to develop a solution that can mimic the heartbeat uh, without uh, the full body, okay? So you start having crazy solution, you will have crazy ideas coming out. So, but all these crazy ideas at the end uh, will help you to create a team, a team of idea. Because in the end, what you need is trying to drive your students. And what I mean with this, um, with this, I mean that uh, once you have a, a, a very different uh, solution from all your students, okay which can be right or wrong okay but this is when you do not have to judge in this case you can start guiding okay or more than guiding you can drive so once we have pool so we have provide incentives and we have solution we can start driving the solution towards the the target that we would like to have 
And this is exactly the same thing that we are doing with brainstormings during lab meetings at the research lab at our university. So all the other people that start creating idea, they just put their ideas on the table and then we are start reading all together, okay? And of course you will have a Gauss of people, okay? So the Gauss distribution where you will have, uh, you know, geniuses, you always have people that have great ideas, they already offer the solution so they can find the uh, good answer uh, without uh, the help of the others. Then you have the lazy one, that even if they're facing the survival issue against the parents, uh, they do not care. So uh, my suggestion in this case would be just focus on the great majority of students they've got here. Because in the end, what you need to do is create a, a critical mass, a gravitational mass that will include all the other students. So you can take all the other students together, thanks to the, other, to the ones that are here, and you start driving them. Because in the end, uh, especially in the research labs, okay, when you're doing research, creativity is not a, a single uh, solution, but actually is, is a team effort. Okay, so you need a full uh, research group to at the end deliver a very nice and robust solution. So this is this is very very important to understand this part because uh, most of the time we're thinking about creativity as the geniuses they are come out with a solution but most of the time you need a lot of background information you need a, a lot of different skills and we have to potentiate these different skills that's that's why we need when we need interdisciplinary um, teams this is working very good and this is also tr very true at this very uh, stage of the research so uh, as you know uh, i'm focused more on the replacement because the replacement is the one that needs this kind of solution and one thing what that we need all together uh, and i'm thinking about the teacher of any grades to the university is trying to keep the students also in this multidisciplinary uh, environment because if we can keep them in this kind of multidisciplinary environment, they can create this different kind of connection between the different kind of uh, matters that you teach. And this is very, very important. Okay, because just, uh, just to give you my experience, when I was a graduate student, I was uh, working with uh, cellular models, okay, that I, I, they were already uh, developed, already validated, everyone was using them so i didn't ask any questions they asked me for you know uh have a biochemical research and i start to use this model then when i start my phd th they asked me to you know refine a model that was already existing and and start developing a new model but of course most of the answer and most of the easiest things are coming from a model that is already established and you only have to refine but once you have to create a new models, here is where we are facing a lot of problems. Because you have no idea, you have never done this before, and nobody is there to guide you. So if you would like to take, <clears throat> you know, the lead of your creativity at the end is because you are pushing very hard on yourself, but also you're very good with all your mates in the lab. So same thing is happening in the classroom, okay? And I was trying to teach this kind of process of creativity also at the university level. But at the university, as the same way and the same way that you're facing with your students, all the people are just worried on passing, you know, the, the test. They would like to have their titles and they will care about uh, creativity only when they're still facing this darkness that I was telling you about. So this process is quite complicated and we need to make it as smoother as possible. And, and the other thing we have to push it, okay? Because uh, if not, it's not coming by itself. So, and especially for the replacement, all the different models that you need are not there. So the models that we, uh, we are using right now, so you have mostly here about organoids, uh, microfluidics, um, organ on chips, uh, stem cell. So all these are the very basics of uh, what we can do right now. So now we need more people with 
other brilliant ideas that can connect all these technologies, but with new innovative solution. Okay. In fact, if you think about that, there are many people uh, talking about creativity, not only in science, but also at the industry level. There are many workshops and creativity things just because we need more ideas to, to solve problems or more ideas just to market the thing. So in the end, we're really facing a problem. And I, I would like to invite you, for example, to go on Google. And if you Google creativity, you will see that uh, in the last um, 60 years, this, this word in, in the books have increased dramatically, dramatically. But in the last eight years, we have a kind of plateau. And this is quite interesting because we still are uh, producing many new ideas, new patents uh, every day. But uh, the thing is that the solution we're looking for are coming from a very small percentage of the population. And what we would like to have, this is the creativity, as I said, should be a kind of a network effort. So everyone should be part of this process so everyone can contribute. And this is, this is a very important part. So another way that I, I didn't only use incentives only in, in my classes, okay? Because of course, uh, this is something that is working, but it's not only, as I said, is can be a negative incentives always requiring uh, for evaluation of, of the original ideas. So a lot of people can feel frustrated. So the other thing to push the creativity was trying to uh, gamify uh, a little bit more uh, difficult concept. So and one of the things, uh, this, which is freely available, is build your plasmid. And, and, and this is, uh, at the end, is, is a way to teach gene, uh, gene therapy and gene transfer, but at the end, genetic engineer to university students. Okay, but so they're using like a, a, a card play game. And, uh, and this is something that worked uh, very well, actually, because uh, when we start doing this game at the very beginning, the people were as you as your students are coming, they're taking this concept, but they're never using it. Okay, so I changed the practical class. And after the conceptual theoretical class that I gave to them in a frontal way, so then instead of take them in the lab and make them pipetting for two hours, something that they even didn't know what they were pipetting or they cannot really understand, I said, OK, let's change it. And I split them into teams and I start putting clinical cases and I say, OK, these clinical cases can be solved by genetic engineer or gene therapies. So now you have all the concepts. So just play the cards and try to find a solution. So and this was very fun, not only for me, but also for them, because first they have the challenge and this is, and this was uh, a very important thing. They were challenging. They were fighting for survive at the end. Uh, they were trying to get the best strategy compared to their peers. And uh, they were coming come out with very novelties ideas. And these ideas were very, very good. And the only thing I have to do it at the end was just to guide them and just refine the scientific concept that they were explaining. But uh, they were very brilliant and they were find different kind of solution that uh, I hope some of them can take in their master thesis. And this was a very, very easy thing. So I just created cards and think, of course, you need time. And I know that the science teacher and any other teacher at the high school doesn't have time. But this is also a way to 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 do these things. And there are many university professors that would like to, you know, uh, engage with um, secondary and primary and high school teacher to create new game and, and try to, you know, get the students more prepared when they got to the university. So I think this is, uh, so this is something that I think it's, it's, it's another way and maybe more fun for everyone. And if we can share the workload to do that, the gamification is quite easy too. So yes, uh, these were uh, actually the, the different solutions. So in the end, uh, just to as a reminder, from my point of view, we need to um, face and turn on the brain. And to turn on the brain, we have to make them face the darkness of fear. 
because in the end they need to find this solution um, yes or yes. We should we should try to just have a critical mass between all our students, and the other thing is trying to get them involved in some fun activities that they can also use the concept that they have they have already. So they can connect all the knowledge that they have and they can find new solutions. So, uh, but on the other side, I would like to ask you, I hope you can speak here, um, what are the kind of solution uh, from a scientific experiment point of view that you have implemented so far in your classroom? So could, could they speak? Yes. So just if, to answer uh, some they, question uh, from the I chat. I confused the raise hand option, which is on the top panel, in the horizontal okay. panel on top. There's a, there's a little icon with a man raising uh, uh, their hand. If uh, they use that, I can uh, grant uh, speaking uh, rights. Or I can enable everyone's microphone as well. But while everyone, someone is speaking, the others need to mute to avoid feedback. OK, I will answer some question from the chat. So <clears throat> yes, the cards, so the game I'm showing is available on, on, on the website that is indicated in the slide. And uh, it's, it's free. It's a PDF, but you can also have a PowerPoint uh, where you can download uh, and also modify as as you want. So this has been used in the last two years and a half. And uh, yeah, there are many universities in the world right now using it. So it's pretty happy. And and they're also sharing with me uh, their uh, update version. So uh, Marco, yeah, could you please share the link to the website? Need, uh, the also chat. the PPT, just send me an email. Uh, yes, so give me a second. I have to st stop the sharing. Okay, here it goes. Thank you, Mark. So, uh, let me. So I, I know that this talk is not very focused on the three R and replacement, but in the end, uh, what we are looking at here is just to fund the creativity. Um, at the university level, what you need at the end, as I said, as a researcher, is trying to find solution and create new tools. And this is very, very important because in the end, uh, you're not looking only for in vitro solution, just for replace animal experimentation, but you are actually looking for answer to uh, in the biomedical research to find a therapy, okay? So the best model in the end is not just to replace the animals, but also is the one that is giving you the best answer to solve the biomedical problem. So uh, everything that you can, uh, you know, take profit at the end from uh, uh, a very good model that can solve you uh, some or answer some questions, okay, from uh, neurodegenerative disease, for example, then all these models are also good to replace. So they, we are just looking for human-based models to do that. But of course, nobody has this background information about human-based models. This is something that came out in the last 10 years. And, and this is something that we have to, you know, boost a little bit more. We have to improve this because if not, all the people will just be stuck using the same models as ever. And we need new ideas to go over these models that are uh, already established. And this is the only way that we are going to, you know, have new models to be replaced.
No, I'm here. Hello? Yeah, just because I'm saying that... Uh... In the chat, the people is not hearing me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, is anyone implementing any creativity tool in your classes? Hello? And what kind? Okay. Marian is asking, is, say, is saying that uh, in our classes we need tech support. So, what kind of tech support do you need? Antoine, we let them talk. Marianne, would you like to uh, speak instead? Your microphone is uh, enabled. I think she's asking if to build your password. Yeah. Okay, Marianne is asking, is this doing for Androids? Uh, do you refer to the gene therapy game? So the game right now is just an offline game. So I kind of uh, monopoly or whatever. Um, we also developed uh, an, a biomolecular uh, biology, uh, molecular biology application. So it's still a game, it's called uh, Molecular Games. But I think in this case, the level is too high, but can be used anyway. And I can also send you the link through Antoine, maybe. Oh, oh Antoine can share, with me, um, can share my email. And you can send me an email. So one thing, one game is about gene therapy. The other game is about uh, molecular biology, the basics. Okay, yes. Um, so I will send Antoine uh, the link. So you can also have this up on the mobile. But as I said, the level in this case is more uh, so for a university professor to be using the classes. So I think it's not that uh, useful, maybe for um, secondary school, but uh, maybe a very last years of, of uh, high school can also be used, okay? De this depends on the level of molecular biology that you are teaching. Maybe um, the mechanics know, can be can adapted to a uh, different topic uh, and more suitable. Maybe the mechanics of the game can be adapted to another topic that is already in the Sorry? curriculum of the the high schools. That's that's for the the life science. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is also something that we were working on uh, to create, and this is why I was commenting that uh, there are, I mean, at least many. Uh, uh, university professor looking for a collaboration with high school to create uh, play, uh, games that are more at a high school level or a secondary school level, which is something that is not easy because sometimes at the university we create this kind of concept, high concept, high knowledge things that cannot be used uh, in high school. So, but for example, the build your plasmid game, so the gene therapy one is a PowerPoint, so you can adapt also the contents and everything. So, 
uh, we can we can uh, I can distribute them and you can just uh, adapt to your class. Uh, the mobile app is a way that, you, of course, the concept can be used, but uh, in that case, it's not really <laughs> student friendly. So we have another uh, question from Adelaide, which is asking, do you think that do you think that creativity should always be linked with technology? No, I don't think so. Um, or it would be better to ask students to. Yes, um, I would. Uh, I would say that we do not have to say uh, to tell the students to use their imagination without the support of technology. We have just to ask the students to use the imagination. Then if they would like to use technology, that's perfect. I think this is uh, this is something that we have and we have to use it. But if they want or they would like to propose some solution that are not technology based is also fine. There's, there's a very big right now in biomedical research, this is uh, there's a lot of innovation coming from, for example, India, which are a basic uh, based on very easy solutions that have no technology. And these are revolution, re, uh, they are revolution, uh, revolutionize uh, the market. Um, there are many very interesting application uh, on, on basic concept. So I would say that we have to give free, um, free accessibility, free access to to any tools they would like to use, because in the, in the end we need to new, use what is available to create something uh, something new. And okay, so uh, yeah, I I think that. Um, you can have many, I mean, there are many, many solutions available to teach creativity, uh, especially for adult people. Uh, but I think the same tools do, are not really, they do not fit really well, uh, you know, uh, teenagers or even younger uh, children, because um, they still do not have all the bias that we have as adult, okay? <clears throat> But uh, there's there are many books out there for creativities, just to let you know uh, some bibliography. And but I would say that more is just exploring and let the the children and teenager uh, do. They can make the research. They have internet, and and this is something that you need to create new solution. You also need to have a very nice background check on what has been done before. This is also true, for example, right now for many companies. So before they are going to launch a new product, they are going to search the scientific literature. They are going to search the patents uh, databases because in the end, what they are looking is what have been done and what we can use it, okay, and what we can improve. And and that's a way also that we are working. So we would like to create new models. We would like to have a new solution, but we have to know what is, has been done before. Any other question or comment? Is there anybody, uh, any from you that have make any game at class level for students? Even if it's not biology, uh, the, the creativity or activities or whatever, also if it's mathematics or... Okay, I don't know if there are any other questions, but uh, I would be very, very happy. Uh, if you have any comment or you would like to share or get in contact with me, um, okay, you can find, of course, on Twitter, but um, you will have my email. So I will be happy to share other experience and other gamification that are out there that have been used. So, and, and also to have a feedback from high school teacher, how we can adapt this kind of game to, to high school or secondary schools.
I think this is this is kind of cool. Uh, this kind of interaction. Okay, more questions coming up. Okay, yeah, Adelaide would like to share some pictures of an activity that we have done uh, on the GRC with Sophia Lady and the organ chips. So yes, please share it with them. Uh, so she had just posted a, a Twitter link, uh, link, and and this was an activity that we have done uh, the GRC uh, three years ago. Uh, and and this was uh, uh, with very small group of students. There were three students, and 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 we explained them more or less what organ and chip were, and what we were looking for. And then we said just just assign them uh, an organ that they have to model in a in a in a vitro plate, and and they start you know creating with uh, dough, you know the kind of dough that you can just find whatever, and they start pulling out ideas. And as I said, this was also uh, this was I mean very easy because you have only three uh, three guys, three teenagers. They were highly motivated, and but at the end, what they can have been, uh, they have done such such very nice thing. I think the case study are very good. Um, so Patricia is, is saying that I normally provide basic information, present a case study and ask for possible solution. I think the case studies are very good if they're using very, uh, you know, uh, uh, very punctual way, because sometimes you have, uh, you have these case studies that are all the time the people is telling you what uh, they have done, like me. And and sometimes uh, there's no useful or the people just trying to copy what they have done. But um, I, I think that we still need to to ask the students what um, after the possible solution, trying to give them the incentive and, and a challenge. Because um, if not, as I said, the brain is very lazy, and and especially if children with or uh, all the hormones and teenager with the hormones, the brain is not thinking about uh, the science or a solution. They're most of the time thinking on more, um, you know biological based uh, needs. But uh, if you have case studies, I, I would like to, to get shared with, with you them. So if you can share them, it would be nice. So, and this is a question for Antoine. So do you have like a, a database of different uh, solutions or uh, examples that have been done during the courses uh, by well, the teacher? For one, we have the, uh... The repository of Scientix that uh, is like a portal for all European educational science educational projects. So there, there are a lot of uh, materials and games, teaching activities developed through uh, projects. But we don't, not that I know of, uh, as a database of teacher uh, activities yeah. that I don't know if that exists, if that's what you meant. We have a, a blog for uh, teaching uh, about cultural so heritage. So you were referring to the scientix.eu. But in this context, yeah, we have the scientix website that I can quickly type in here. And also Eleni maybe can, can add if, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I was uh, wondering about design thinking you mentioned earlier. Uh, that's a very interesting method. Maybe yes, uh, my... not, te yeah, not any the teacher knows about. Maybe if you can tell us a bit more about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, design thinking is something uh, quite, well, I, I would say it's not very new, but uh, I, I think it's quite uh, trendy right now, or at least in the last three, four years, because... Okay. Can you start again? Lani, can you hear There me? was just some, uh, some breaking. If you start okay. over, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, it's better now. Okay, great. Um, so design thinking, it's something that uh, is not really a new thing, but uh, in the last, I would say, three, four years is very trendy, especially for, uh, you know, uh, startups, entrepreneur and biomedical uh, stuff, because uh, mostly it's trying to represent everything that you, you're thinking, like mind mapping. So I think that most of you know what mind mapping is, is, is trying to have a logic flow of concept that you usually have when you start thinking ideas and everything. So uh, think on this same level, but all by drawing, okay? And the thing is that usually the drawing takes a, the, a creative part of our brain. So we, when we start drawing the concepts, we also start having new ideas. So, uh, and there are people that are very, very good in representing uh, very complex concepts in a very, very easy way, drawing. And this is first give you uh, a smooth logic flow. So you can have, you can have a very complex thing represented in a very easy way and once you can see this in a very very easy way then also you start having more ideas and 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 i think this is quite powerful approach but of course it takes time and also you need to be trained uh, or, or to, to train yourself uh, it doesn't need to be a very good painter i'm not so even if you have a, a very basic uh, idea uh, but the thing is, just start training. You, you can do yourself. And also, there are many resources online for design thinking. I think this is, this is um, a new way because in the end, our brain is very visual. So everything that I'm telling you right now, uh, it's nice, but uh, you're hearing me, you're looking at me. But maybe if we're, we're doing an activity, which is something uh, I'm, I'm doing in, offline, to boost a little bit more a biomedical and brainstorming discussion, uh, something that uh, something that we do is actually have a visual uh, a visual appeal uh, of the ideas. And one thing is when you are receiving the the let's say the, the pictures uh, or the drawing, and the other thing is when you start drawing, and this is also boost your creativity. So I think this is uh, a good a good tool to to be used also in class. Uh, I never use this kind of design thinking in uh, in research, uh, but as I said, research is is uh, is a contest where uh, you know there's high competition, uh, very challenge. Thank you very much. And uh, the Twitter pictures they look really nice with the uh, play dos. There is also some visual. <laughs> Can you can you tell us a bit uh, about it? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah. With the activity. So with, uh, you mean about the pictures? Was hello? Yeah. So. Well, as I said, these are uh, high school students that came to the JRC three years ago. And Sophia, which is uh, a JRC FM officer, uh, uh, together we explained uh, to the high school, uh, high school students what stem cells were and how we were using the stem cell to create new organ on chips. And so we, as you can see in the picture, there are some, um, some slides that they have with how the organs are working and also who are the effect of certain treatments that you have on, on, the, uh, on the brain or the liver or uh, any other organs, okay? So, and, and what they are, we ask them without telling them anything and how to do it, it's just to try to mimic this process in vitro. 
Okay, so you have, for example, a drug working on the brain and you would like to know how the brain is responding. And once you know the brain is responding, you, you would like to register a certain kind of output. And this is what they have done. So at the end, what they were trying to do is trying to recreate what they were thinking the brain has done or the heart is done. So they were start playing with the dough, uh, creating the cells, putting the cells in a media or in a very specific environment. And once they have done this, they were start explaining us uh, what was it. So it was a very, um, a very easy uh, task to do it, something that didn't require a lot of time. And, and but it was quite interesting to see how they were visualizing. So this is a kind, I mean, if you have the, the design thinking, which is 2D, this is the way that you can think that this is a 3D design thinking, because in the end they have to do. And if you are thinking about that and connecting with the technology, uh, most of the things that have been done so far by organoids or brain on chip or other organ on chip is also connecting to the 3D printing. So in the end, it's it's the design thinking is nice, but if you also can play with the dough, for example, uh, let's call him uh, dough thinking. It's cool because in the end we 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 need three D models, and these three D models can be done with three D technology that are, are now available. Hello? Thank you, Marco. Uh, the voice is breaking at times. Um, what we could do maybe uh, if you can, after the, the webinar, if you can share with us uh, the, uh, the resources you uh, mentioned, maybe if there are some, there's a summary of the activity as well, that would be really great. Yeah, yeah, no problem. There's no summary of activities, but okay, I can share you with much. you the resources, no problem. Are there any questions for Marco? Any any thoughts? Yeah, you are. Or any comment? Yeah. Or uh, if not, you can just share with them uh, my email. So if anyone would like to, you know, to just send me an email for information or just looking for resources or other ideas or have it a Skype for further discussion, I will be happy to do it. So. Thank you. Thank you so much, Marco. Thank you for your time. And uh, thank you very much for all the participants who are here. You're I welcome. guess there are teachers, but also I'm guessing there are also some uh, researchers among you. Thank you very much for your time as well and for being here. Uh, this was the, the webinar for the, the three hours MOOC. If you'd like to check it out, it's still ongoing. And uh, this was a, a scientific webinar. And uh, Eleni uh, shared the website with you as well on the resources page. Uh, Marco, I hope maybe when you find the time, you can check out the, the Scientix website and see if there's anything that is uh, useful for you as well. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Have a good evening. And uh, I will share the info with okay. the participants Thank later. Thank you very much to everyone. Concerning the resources. I'll Thank follow you. up with you. Thank you and have a good evening. Okay, perfect. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye.